Hey, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. So I'm excited to explain hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. In this video, we're going to talk about symptoms, causes, treatments, how these things overlap, and how they're different. And the important point is that these words sound a lot alike, but they're basically the opposite. So hypo, remember below. So below rhymes with hypo. And then hyper, think about excessive. So there's the E in that. You know, I've gotten in the habit of exaggerating the distinction of these words, hypo and hyper. What happens is that this is a state where there's the wrong amount of thyroid hormones, too little or too much. And thyroid hormones do a lot of really important stuff. So the three main categories of what they do in the body, they manage energy production, nerve conduction, and then tissue repair. So with that in mind, you can think about energy production. This affects things like our heart rate, you know, whether it's beating faster or slower. This can also affect simply energy levels, whether we're tired or not, you know, how well we burn body weight. It affects the rate of movement of our bowels, controls things like our menstrual rhythms. And then nerve conduction, this is about just that, you know, how nerve signals move throughout the body, how they work within the brain. And then tissue repair, that affects regeneration of skin, hair, and nails. I mean, also tendons, ligaments, muscles, and bones, they all tie into the exact balance of these thyroid hormones. Now, with that in mind, we see different symptoms when there's too little versus too much of these hormones, generally. I'll talk about some nuance, but a classic scenario is we can think about with too little hormone, the heart rate is slower. When there's too much, it's elevated, and one might even feel it just bounding or palpitating. And similar for energy levels, when there's too little, there's fatigue or exhaustion. When there's too much, it's not really like good, healthy energy. It's almost like anxiety, panic, feeling frenetic. And then body weight. So weight gain is easier when there's way too little thyroid hormone. When there's way, way, way too much, there's often weight loss, not fat loss, but loss of muscle and bone. Bowels can be affected by this. Uh, they're slower, tending towards constipation during hypothyroidism or they're loose and erratic when there's excess thyroid hormones. You know, sensations of feeling hot or cold, same, same thing. But here's the thing I want you to really hear is that at the extremes, at almost like a complete lack of thyroid hormone or a crazy, crazy excess, the symptoms are very distinct. But in most cases, when the thyroid's not right, it's off to a mild or moderate degree, and you can have symptoms of either at either. So what I'm saying is you could have hyperthyroidism, or which can be from the body not working right or from taking too much thyroid hormone, and that can cause weight gain. So it's important to know that these symptoms, that the thyroid can affect a lot, and too much or too little are, are both bad for the body, but there's not really always a clear demarcation between which causes which set of symptoms. Now I want to talk about the causes of hypo and hyperthyroidism. Now, in most situations, the most common cause by far is autoimmune thyroid disease. The main ones are Hashimoto's and Graves' disease. Now, generally, Hashimoto's is associated with too little thyroid hormone, and Graves' is associated with too much. So that's the most common distinction. Hashimoto's, the autoimmunity, damages the thyroid and prevents it from making enough hormone to suit the body's needs. And then in Graves' disease, the autoimmunity, it hurts the regulatory processes, and it basically confuses the thyroid into thinking your body wants more from it than it really does. So most common treatments, I'll start with conventional treatments. So when the thyroid's badly underactive, the main conventional treatment is to prescribe a medication that contains T4. That's the main hormone that the thyroid produces. And the rationale is that if there's too little hormone, adding more in will help. I won't spend a lot of time on that in this video. Uh, T4, most medications are brands like Synthroid, Levothyroxine, and it's tough. The Honestly, the odds of success, by success meaning people feeling their best again, are rather low. And the problem mostly is that in typical scenarios, the symptoms are more tied to the immune response than they are to a simple lack of thyroid hormone. So yeah, Levothyroxine, Synthroid are the main things done in the conventional world. And natural treatments, the biggest thing here is hypothyroid diet, you know, diet for hypothyroidism.
And this is a tricky one. There's a lot of popular diets that are used for hypothyroidism, and pretty much all of them work sometimes. And whenever something works for somebody, I'm happy. <laughs> so if you try to diet that is one of the ones that I'll mention didn't do well in clinical studies, but it worked for you, I'm happy. And I'm not trying to change your mind or change what you did or change what goes on your plate. <laughs> uh, but diets that have regulated iodine, they have been the one type that's been shown to be effective. A lot of other diets have been studied, gluten-free, mostly cutting various things out, you know, gluten-free, autoimmune paleo diets have been the most studied. And either they, gluten-free diets, all the studies have been about people with celiac disease and they should go gluten-free, no doubt about it. It doesn't really change their thyroid symptoms or their likelihood of getting thyroid disease. Autoimmune paleo, a couple of studies done, one showed no benefit, one showed things got worse. But we've got about half a dozen studies showing that iodine regulation can help a lot, like as in reverse the disease for the majority of people. I'll talk about this in depth in other videos, and there's others that I've done already, but this is really, many have argued, should be the main step for treatment for hypothyroidism because it works for most people and it's safe and it can be done in the short term. There's also really good evidence about nutraceuticals being useful. And this is in terms of helping reduce the symptoms of hypothyroidism, also helping the thyroid to work better and helping the body respond more effectively to thyroid hormones. The studies about nutraceuticals helping, they inspired me to make thyroid-specific formulations. This is a line of nutraceuticals that are all made just based upon best current human evidence. Everything was made from scratch based upon high quality studies using safe ingredients and using data showing that these things actually help real people with thyroid disease improve in ways that are meaningful. Now I'm gonna to touch on typical treatments for overactive thyroid. In the conventional world, the mainstays of treatment are medication, uh, destroying the thyroid with radioactive iodine, or surgery to remove the overactive thyroid. And as a generalization, these things work. In, they pretty much never don't work. The question is whether someone needs to do definitive therapy, meaning therapy that they'll never have normal thyroid function on their own again, as in destroying it or taking it out. There's good data that many can slow it by medications and not need therapy that's lasting long term. The main medication used in the conventional world is methimazole. The backup one is called propylthiouracil. And what they do is they diminish the amount of iodine absorbed by the thyroid. And that simply makes it less able to make excessive amounts of hormone. It just slows it down. Now, in the natural world, when things are done ideally, diet can go a long ways towards helping this. There's a feedback cycle. Once the thyroid gets overactive, the extra hormone can worsen the autoimmunity that makes the extra hormone. So somehow or other, you've got to slow it down first before much of anything else can help. And medications that are used conventionally work reasonably well for this. They've got a place for that. But when they are done with diet, it becomes so much more effective. Now, think this through. The medications, they work because they prevent the thyroid from absorbing as much iodine, right? Now, if there's less iodine in the diet, you know, less iodine they're available for the thyroid, the medications have a whole lot less work to do, and people don't need them as long or in as great of dosages. So it's a real wonderful compliment. So that's a good once over about hypo versus hyperthyroidism, some of the main symptoms, some of the main treatments. The big points to take away from this were the symptoms can be many. You know, I mentioned some of the big ones. Honestly, every part of your body can be involved because unlike any other hormone, Thyroid hormones act on every cell from head to toe. So there are classic symptoms, but almost any symptom can be related. The thing I want you to remember is that you shouldn't think about a bright line between hypo low thyroid and hyper overactive thyroid symptoms. Yeah, at the crazy extremes are different, but for most people's experience, they're mild or moderate, they can overlap. So not always distinct. And the other big take-home message is uh, diet can do a lot. You know, diet can be the mainstay of treatment for most versions of hypothyroidism, and it can be a really helpful adjunct for hyperthyroidism. The important message is if you've got either, don't give up on feeling your best because you can. It's possible to be at least as healthy as you were before this whole thing started, and don't settle for less than that. All right, Dr. C with you. Take great care, and I'll see you real soon.